Hey, my fellow golf ball addicts, welcome to season four of Golf Ball Attic. And we are starting off season four in a great way with one that a lot of you have been requesting. I'm, of course, talking about the TaylorMade Speed Soft Ink, brand new for the 2024 season. Let's dive right in. All right, so let's start off with a couple things here. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. One of the biggest things about this golf ball, it's selling point, it's advertising point, is the design. And if you take a look at this, I mean, it's definitely different. It's kind of, it's called ink for a reason. It's supposed to be kind of, to look like paint sloshes, paint splatters. Uh, it definitely is a unique look. There's nothing like this on the market. A lot of these golf balls now are going to this type of design to have something unique, interesting picks, you know, red, white, and blue, whatever. There's a million of them out there now. Uh, now, I will say that just by looking at this, this is going to turn some people off. A lot of the older crowd or middle-aged crowd isn't going to like this. They like traditional white golf balls. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of them are now coming around to the idea of the yellow golf ball and things like that, but there's no chance. I mean, I can just tell you already by looking at it, it's pretty loud. And even for me, a guy who is loud, I'm looking at it thinking, that's pretty loud, but they do come in a variety of colors. I think they come in five different colors, red, blue, green, pink. Uh, you know, your basic colors are five there. Here, I can show them. And this is supposed to be the successor, of course, to the TaylorMade Soft Response, which wasn't a golf ball that really made it high on the top 100 list. I didn't have a lot of success with it. It was really one of the lower mediocre two-piece golf balls I reviewed on the channel. There just wasn't anything special about it. So I really hope that they've made some changes. I really hope that they've made some adjustments with the feel, with the how it performs off the club, things like that. That way this golf ball can maybe make it a little higher on the list. Without further ado, let's dive a little bit more into the design. So if you look at the front there, it has you know, your TaylorMade logo, which is a great logo. Lots of stuff all over it, the black and green. It's definitely loud splotches. You know, there's really no symmetry to it. Uh, as far as how the golf ball feels, it actually doesn't feel bad for a two-piece golf ball. You can tell it's definitely a plastic blend on top, Iometer or Surlin, maybe a blend of the two. Uh, however, it's actually got a pretty decent feel to it. So they made a little bit of uh, progress there, I would say. Coming around, or coming around on the side, excuse me, and looking at the alignment tool, you can see it's actually really thick, which I like. I'm not big on the arrows on the end, but as you can see, it's really chaotic. You got you know, that, those little extra lines in there, it's supposed to kind of fit with the rest of the model of the golf ball. The reason I'm not big on that is just because, yes, it's easy to line it up, but also if you look over the top, you'll see all the other paint splotches. So a lot of the time when I'm lining it up, my eyes don't want to just go to the speed soft. They want to look off to the side and up above and all that because of all that going on. So it, it is, it's an interesting design. It's definitely bold. We'll have to see how that plays out later when I am putting with it. Uh, but overall, it's, it's an interesting design. Now, they do make this golf ball in just the regular white model. If you're someone who's like, hey, I, that's too much noise for me. I can't play with all that stuff on my ball. That's perfectly fine. They just make the regular white model as well. So we'll just see it based on solely on the numbers for that. All right, now, before we dive into the numbers from the brand new launch monitor for the 24 season, uh, let's go ahead and go to the chipping and putting green, which I'm actually at right now. Let's do some chips. Let's do some putts. Let's see how it reacts there. Okay, so a couple things I noticed uh, around the chipping and putting green with this golf ball. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I was chipping is that, uh, yes, it felt soft exactly like I thought it would. It's very squishy. Uh, it doesn't come off like a bouncy ball, but it just has a nice, soft, even balanced feel to it, which some people like. What I was really surprised with, and you probably saw it there if you really look close, is that the ball actually kind of checks up, which is really interesting. Two-piece golf balls usually don't check up to that degree. I actually had one bounce left on me. Uh, a bunch of them just actually checked up a little bit. Now, they didn't have a stopping power by any means with chips, but a lot of golf balls don't. Even your tour golf balls aren't going to stop on a dime from chips. So the fact that this golf ball was able to do that, being just a lower you know, two-piece model, is really impressive. It's one of the better ones I've tested for checkups, so that's really good to see. So wedges the feels really good it checks up there's some forgiveness there it really ticks all the boxes which is awesome
Now, as far as with the putter, as far as the feel of the golf ball, it actually maintains that same level of feel it had with the chipping. Uh, very soft, just dead, not springy, but very consistent, very nice. It does have a true roll. Now, it doesn't quite feel like a lot of tour balls. A lot of tour balls have that buttery feel I talk about, where when you putt it, it just, it almost like gets you excited because it just feels so buttery. There's none of that here. I don't expect that with a two-piece golf ball. But again, I'm very impressed with what I saw around the green from this golf ball. Uh, it just checks every box. It doesn't do anything fantastic to blow me away, but it does exactly what it needs to do. It, it, it provides a lot of consistency. It provides a lot of forgiveness. And with you know the, the younger crowd and the, the beginner intermediate crowd that's gonna need this golf ball, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for forgiveness. You're looking for consistency. And this golf ball actually does all that really well. So, so far, so good. Let's go ahead and get into the numbers now where I test the different clubs and let's see how the golf ball does there because we're off to a great start so far. All right, so let's get into these uh, metrics with our brand new launch monitor for the 2024 season. I'm really excited that we're gonna now be expanding our data. Uh, it's awesome. I mean, first of all, we're gonna have the 50 yard pitch again to measure some spin. We're gonna be able to measure spin with the nine iron now. Uh, and also the results are just going to be a lot more accurate, a lot more fine detailed. There's so much more it shows me. I can tell when a, a bad shot's being hit so much more easier, you know, because hitting into a net, you don't really know. Um, it, it's, it's really cool. So first of all, let's start with the 50 yard pitch. It's been two, three years now since I've done a 50 yard pitch, so I'm super excited. Now, with this golf ball, there was a couple things I noticed. So the first one is uh, if you actually hit it proper, you actually hit down on it and you hit it really well, the spin number is actually really good there, as you can see. I mean, that's 7,898 RPMs of spin with a two-piece golf ball. That's nothing to scoff at. And out of all the, the numbers I had, um, a lot of them were in the 8,000s, 8,459, 8,069, 8,055. So getting 8,000 RPMs, a lot of people, when I recommend two-piece golf balls to them on the channel, the first thing I hear is, ah, no, nah, I need that spin. You know, I got to have that spin. And I'm like, well, no, you don't, first of all. It's, it's kind of a myth. A lot of people think they need way more spin than they actually do. Uh, but the other thing is, is that now there's really no excuse. The, the technology in these golf balls has gotten so much better that now two-piece golf balls are stopping pretty well. Now, you will notice a difference because there's not a urethane cover, so it's not going to stick the green much as as far as chips, pitches, you know, around the green, things like that. But as far as hitting, you know, a 50-yard pitch, 8,000 is going to almost stop on a dime. That's pretty darn good. So love to see that there. Um, now, I did notice that if you did kind of miss hit it a little bit, uh, now granted, I'm using a more tour level blade 54 degree wedge, uh, but if you miss hit it, you're looking at like five or 6,000. So there isn't much forgiveness there. You either hit it really well and it stops on a dime, or you miss hit it and it doesn't really do that at all, but that's like most tour golf balls, but I was hoping for a little more forgiveness with a two piece, but hey, that's okay. Now let's get into the nine iron numbers. Now the nine iron numbers are gonna be slightly different just because my old launch monitor did not calculate spin. So you gotta imagine if you're hitting a ball 125 yards and you figure it's spinning 7,000 RPM, it's really gonna be like 118, 117. Well, because it didn't measure spin, it never calculated what that distance loss would be. So that's why you know the, the averages are gonna be different. So what I'm really looking for here is the ball speed. So, all right, so looking at the numbers here, uh, we have for the ball speed, we're looking at 94.8. That's actually really, really good. That's above my average. I love to see that. Uh, as far as the spin, 7,198. That's amazing with a nine iron. I mean, that's going to stop pretty much anywhere it is, especially for a two piece golf ball. I love to see that. And then coming over a little further, we have the uh, launch angle, which is 24.5, which is maybe slightly high, but on a two piece, you know, softer compression golf ball, I don't mind that at all. Distance wise, now we have 120 for your carry and then we have total 120.2. So that's really where this new launch monitor is coming into play. The old launch monitor would have said 120 with a rollout of 126, 127 because it's not calculating that spin like I said. Here, as you can see, 120 for your distance, 120.2 for your rollout. So how I said earlier, it was gonna stop on a dime. Wherever you land this golf ball is pretty much where it's gonna be based on its spin number. So that's actually really good. I like 120 carry with a nine iron. That's, that's pretty impressive. I've gotten a lot less with golf balls that were supposed to do a lot more. Uh, so I'm fine with that. Those are really good nine iron numbers. Let's hope it continues into the seven iron. 
And so the seven iron, of course, we're gonna start with the carry 151.1, which is uh, actually right where I need it to be. That's awesome. 152 with the total rollout. So that actually implies that there's a lot of spin on this one too. So uh, let's look at that, 6200. Okay, so 6200 is like a medium level amount of spin. It's kind of average, uh, but it's not bad for a two-piece golf ball and a seven iron. That's, that's I mean, it's kind of right where I would need it to be. 110.9 on your ball mile per hour speed. I love to see that. I actually got 114.2 on one of them, which is incredible. That might be a new record, to be honest with you. Uh, that's really, really good. Uh, ball angle launch, 20.4. That is, again, slightly high, so it is consistently launched launching high, which is really, really good. Um, yeah, no, those numbers are phenomenal. I really like those a lot. Again, really good ball speed, really good distances. Uh, the spin is right where I need it to be. Launch angle is consistent. Sometimes I'll test a golf ball and, you know, the nine iron will launch low and then the seven iron will launch high and the driver will launch mid. And it's like, it's, I hate that. I hate the inconsistency. Again, I said it before, I'll say it again. When you're a newer golfer, intermediate golfer, or you're just looking to hit some greens, lower your handicap, you want consistency and forgiveness. All this other mumbo gumbo about a massive driver distance and stuff, look, hit the fairway, hit the center of the green, two putt, move on, every hole. That's, that's the motto when you're trying to get better. Now coming into the five hybrid, this is another area where you're going to see differences in what I did before. Now, the way the old launch monitor worked was it essentially measured it as a utility wedge because that was the only way I could do a hybrid. Um, you know, I knew those numbers weren't always accurate. I just used them together. That way I could compare ball speed and distance and, and it, it worked. It worked for the channel for a couple of years. It's awesome. But I knew my five hybrid didn't really go 200 yards. I mean, I go out to the course and it's like 170. So I knew it wasn't quite to that degree, but it still helps in the regard if I test golf ball A, it's 190, and golf ball B, it's 193. It still worked. It worked for a couple of years. It got us through what we needed to. But now, again, these are a lot more accurate. But you're going to see those distance numbers come down. So it's going to be about ball speed again. So with the five hybrid here, as you can see, we're looking at 169.4, which actually that's kind of right where I would want it to be. My, my six iron's 160, so I would want my seven, my five hybrid to be about 170 as far as that goes. 171.5 on your total distance. Ball speed 120.3, which is really, really good. Uh, the only thing I don't like about that is there was some inconsistencies. You know, I, my max was, you know, 125, 126, but my lowest was 115. Now, of course, that could be a swing issue. That could be a, uh, you know, a ball contact issue, a ball striking issue. But a lot of the time with two-piece golf balls, I just get a little more forgiveness than that. So it's a minor mark, but I love the total. 120.3 is awesome. It's well above average. And then the spin numbers, as you can see, 5,572. That is a lot of spin with the five hybrid. Um, you know, there was a couple times I really mishit it and I got maybe around the 3,500 range, but a lot of the time I got near 6,000 RPM, which probably is a little too much to be honest with you at the five hybrid. But am I really gonna complain that my five hybrid's going 170 and it's sticking on the green right where I want it to? No, that'd be a silly thing to kind of complain about. So the driver numbers, again, it's gonna be about ball speed. The, the swing caddy was really good at measuring ball speed, I found out after doing a bunch of testing. Uh, but the, the distance numbers, so-so, because again, what, what we were measuring was uh, ball elevation. You know, I'm in Florida, I'm nine feet above sea level. I mean, that's nothing. You're, a, a 230 drive where I'm at is actually really, really good. Now, once you get into the Midwest and other parts of the country where you're 5,000 feet above sea level or 3,000 feet above sea level, yeah, 250, 260 is about the norm, you know, because you just have that little bit of extra altitude to carry the ball. Not the case here in Florida. I mean, it's, it's pretty, I mean, the ball comes up, ball comes down pretty quick. Uh, so 230 is really good. So when the swing caddy was telling me, oh yeah, you're getting 250, I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so I knew it was a little off, but ball speed was still really accurate. So again, the distance numbers will be different here until we get more golf balls reviewed and get it built up. But the ball speed will be really important here. So carry distance, 211.1. Yeah, unfortunately, that's about the gist of it. Now, 220.8, that is a little low, but I will say that that makes sense. Once you get into these compression golf balls that are a lot lower, they're meant for slower to mid swing speeds. Usually, the, the smaller irons perform really well, and then once you get to the driver, I start over compressing it a little bit. I think that's what happened here, so I did lose a little bit of distance, but let's check the ball uh, mile per hour speed, 134.6. Yeah, so kind of lining average, just slightly above average, not bad. I was actually able to get uh, some pretty decent numbers if I really got a hold of it. And then of course your spin numbers, 2419 is awesome. I'd love to see that, that's really, really low. Um, I think it was just being over compressed a little, that's all. I mean, it did launch a little high again, but hey, that's been the case so far with every club, so I'd love to see that. 
those numbers are really good, to be honest with you. I mean, there's, there's uh, a lot of consistency in there. There's a lot of uh, the golf ball doing exactly what it needs to. I mean, from the time I've started this review, that just kind of seems to be the, the main objective that I would take from everything is that it just really performs consistent with what it's supposed to do. It launches a little higher, it gets up in the air easier, it feels balanced, it doesn't try to just be exotic anywhere except the look. Other than that, it just tries to be a golf ball that does what it's supposed to do. Hit fairway, hit green, two putt, move on. Love to see that. So those are all really good numbers. Let's talk about the durability real quick, which I gotta be honest with you, it's pretty darn impressive. I mean, I, told, I said earlier that this golf ball felt really good, but I mean, after hitting the full round of shots, I've played a couple rounds on the course with this golf ball. And I mean, it still just looks really good. I mean, despite either one of them, it's just phenomenal. I love what it is, there's hardly any scuffs. And I think what also helps is because the design is so loud, and it's so full that you really can't, I think it hides a lot of the blemishes. So I'm sure there are some there. In fact, if I feel the golf ball, I can kind of feel some there but you just can't tell. So is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't know. I mean, if there's obviously, if you could feel it and there's any scuffs or anything, you don't want to use it. You don't want to putt with it. Uh, but as far as the looks, it looks phenomenal. So overall, really good. I would call it a four, four and a half out of five. Really good from a two-piece model. All right, so final conclusion. Who's the golf ball for? Where does it rank in our top 100? Um, so I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, TaylorMade golf balls have not done a lot in the past to really impress me that much. Uh, they've just always really come mediocre, flat. I mean, I know they're trying to make improvements, but for now it's just been a lot of marketing mumbo jumbo. Uh, but I gotta give credit where credit's due. This is actually a really well-performing golf ball. Uh, everything from the 50-yard pitch to the driver, it was very consistent. I had gains in, in ball speed. I had gains in carry distance. Uh, everything was just really right where I needed to be. Like I said, you know, tee to fairway to green. It just does what it needs to do. Now there are a couple things. One, I'm not super big on the price point. $25 kind of does seem like the normal going rate for most AAA two-piece golf balls. You know, your Callaway Super Soft, your, you know, Bridgestone E6, I think is going to that. I mean, that just seems to be kind of the new standard is $25 for a dozen golf balls for a two-piece. Uh, now, there are still some better values out there as far as the Snell being $19.99 and the Wilson Zip being a dollar golf ball. There's other brands out there that have a better value for sure, but... I mean, it's just, it kind of falls in that average category. I wish the value was a little better. Now, as far as the design, after playing with this golf ball bunch, when I first saw the commercial for it and I first saw these golf balls, I was like, oh man, that is so, so good. I love how it looks. After playing with it a while, it really does get old quick. Um, as much as I would love to give it like a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10, as far as, hey, you know, design, innovation, it just, it's too overwhelming. It's too chaotic. It's too messy. And I've asked a lot of people about it and that's, the consensus unanimous from everybody is they're like there's too much going on you know and that's that's the case it gets old after a while and yes so when i line up my putts i notice that as well there's just so much going on that even though it's a nice thick line like i like it's just it's chaotic so i applaud them for trying something new i don't know if it's going to be for everyone if you like it let me know if you play with this golf ball and you play for it a little bit and you still like it let me know uh, but yeah, for me, it just got old really quick. So a little bit of a, a mark there against it. But other than that, really, really good. After crunching all these numbers, this golf ball actually falls 31st on the top 100 list. That is really, really good, especially when you consider the fact that, you know, I think the, the soft response was 70s, 80s. I, it, it was really low. I just didn't care for it at all. Uh, so actually having that big of a jump is a big, big deal. And, um, you know, it's, it's definitely worth a try. If you're a slower mid-swinger, you need some forgiveness out there, you just, you don't want any flashiness really, just get the regular white version uh, and just hit those greens, hit those fairways and lower your handicap and it, it'll be a good time doing it. So that's my thoughts. I really love it. 2024 is off to a great start. Thank you as always. Keep watching to keep saving and keep learning until next time.